Hi, today's cheesy video lesson in security is how to spot and not get caught by a fish. Or maybe how to catch a spotted fish. Well, we'll see how it turns out. Spotting a fish is easy once you know where and what to look for. Most fishing is done by email or browsing the web, and usually the fisher tries to trick you into giving up information or downloading malware that will let them pretend to be you or attack your computer and steal your data. Let's take a look at the most common types, which also happen to be very real and recent examples that folks in Kentucky have fallen for, districts, KDE as well, each resulting in actual breaches that put data at risk. In this first example, you can see a regular looking email that's warning you that your email box is full, and it prompts you to click a link to provide the necessary information to get more space. There are several issues here. One, it's from someone we don't know, and that person doesn't have an email address like ours, yet it's instructing us to do something. Issue two, it has a very generic greeting, which it kind of has to have since these fishers send these emails out to thousands of people at a time. They can't be personalized. Issue three, it defines a problem that you can't disprove, like the hidden files in your mailbox. Who wouldn't know how to check that? Issue four, there's a very generic looking signature at the bottom. No local phone number or anything. And all of our help desk emails always have a signature at the bottom with a uh, email address and a phone number. But let's say you click on the link anyway. Here's the website that pops up and you need to know there's still a chance to avoid getting fished completely. Let's look at the hints that you should pick up on. Hint number one, and really this is the only hint that you need to know, uh, it asks for your password. No legitimate service will ever do that. Not KDE, not a district, not a business that you work with, not a bank, nobody. Hint number two, it also asks for anything it thinks might be a username, such as your name, email address, employee ID number, and so on, along with where to use these credentials your webmail login URL. Lastly, for hint number three, the word refresh is misspelled down in the fake CAPTCHA box. But it's there to make you think this is it. So here's another example of an emailed fish. It's very similar, but adds two additional things to push you to fast action without thinking. It uses the name of a real person from your organization as the sender. I've used mine in this example. And it adds a sense of urgency to try to make you do it now instead of thinking it through or asking someone else for help. But it's just as bad. Now we have the next most common type of attempted fish. It's called a drive-by because it can happen even when you just visit an infected website. I'm using New York Times as an example, but nearly any website can be infected by a hacker and begin serving up malware. When you visit infected websites, a scary web pop-up window warns you that you're infected with something and your only hope is to call them quick or immediately download their antivirus software. Sadly, if you call that number, you've been fished and tricked. You probably will speak with a very nice person, but instead of actually helping, they will direct you to a web link that will download malware to your computer. The malware will live on your computer and suck the data out of it, kind of like a data vampire, sending it to the thieves. This happened to a Kentucky district just days before this presentation was created. Not only did it require the districts to make changes to every district person's account, it can also easily cause the loss of personal information, a data breach. This sort of attack is one of the main reasons we say never to casually browse the web on any computer or server that contains any sensitive information like student data, social security numbers, or the like. If you are accessing Infinite Campus, Munis, Chris, SITS, or any system that contains personal information, please do not use the same computer for reading tabloid news, checking sports scores, etc. The risk to the organization and to the folks whose data are entrusted to us is just too great. So what do you do with a fake window? Just click OK? Nope. How about close the window? Uh-uh. Click the X button? Not that either. This pop-up is under the control of the hacker and any button on the pop-up can do whatever the hacker wants it to do. So clicking on any of them may actually just go ahead and install the malware on your computer. The solution, if you are using Windows, is to press the Alt and F4 keys of your keyboard at the same time to close the window without giving it the chance to download malware. 
If you are using a Macintosh, click Command, Alt, and Escape. And if neither of those seem to work, call your local district's help desk or technology office. So, now you're an expert on not getting fished. Remember these four easy tips. Think before you click or browse. Confirm that the email is legitimate, especially if there's a warning or a call to action. Close pop-up messages carefully using your Alt and F4 keys for PC or Command Alt and Escape for Macintosh. And when in doubt, call your local district help desk or technology department. Thanks for participating.